Well, hello everyone, and thank you for being here for this webinar. So just to introduce myself, I'm Dr. Annette LaRocco. I'm the Associate Director of the Leon Charney uh, Diplomacy Program at Florida Atlantic University. The program was created by my colleague, uh, the director, Dr. Jeffrey Morton in 1996, um, with the goal of providing students the unique opportunity to enhance diplomatic skills in areas such as research, writing, um, public speaking, negotiation, and conflict and dispute resolution. Uh, in 2017, we were honored to be named um, uh, for, with the legacy of uh, the diplomatic work of Leon Charney. Uh, and since we've been the Leon Charney uh, Diplomacy Program, working closely with the Charney Resolution Center. Um, and so the program at FAU does national competitions in New York and DC and elsewhere, and has been the recipient of 37 national and international awards, including a first place national award um, in 2008 at, at the Washington DC competition. Um, so I will moderate the conversation here today with our various FAU participants and ambassadors. So we'll have Sili, Ansari, and Ophir um, quickly introduce yourselves, and then we will uh, have the ambassadors do so. Hi, I'm Sili Charney. I'm the founder of the Charney Resolution Center in Hakfar Yarok in Israel, where the Emmys School is working. Emmys, the uh, Eastern Mediterranean International School following the IB program, a uh, school for change. We collaborate from day one, where I built a platform for the students to converse peace. The school is built from kids all over the world, and they have 20% Israelis, 20% Palestinians, and the rest are from other countries. I built a center in order to build a platform for teenagers to uh, be able to converse peace, to get tools about conflict resolution, and um, the goal is basically to become uh, involved citizens, uh, useful citizens, smart voters, and eventually uh, very good leaders. Uh, one of the extensions of our activity is the uh, ambassador program where we get attached to you. Um, it's basically to uh, extend the relations with other communities all over through the graduates of the center and the Emmy school. Um, it's just to create a network of great uh, young people growing into their own fields, um, collaborating with each other, taking care of their own communities and communities all over. Okay, hello everyone. I am uh, Sari Moram Shanan. I am the director uh, of the CRC since last November, and it's an honor for me. Uh, I was born in, and raised in uh, Jerusalem, uh, where my political view uh, took form and it's important for, for this uh, role. I started my professional career as an educational consultant uh, at the urban uh, high school in Tel Aviv. And for the last uh, 30 years, I have been working as an organizational consultant. Uh, as a director of CRC, I'm, and it's important to me to know you. I'm Ophir. Hanan. I'm Israeli, born and raised in Israel, and also spent eight years of my childhood in the United States. And I'm the coordinator of the ambassador program. I've been working for the center for the past two years as both a media intern and the um, ambassador program coordinator. I was a part of the inaugural class of EMIS, Eastern Mediterranean International School alongside uh, Naka Aligo, who was here with me too. The Eastern Mediterranean International School was the first international school based in, in Israel. Hear from our ambassadors who have been involved with the FAU program, both from FAU as well as the ambassadors. So we have five online. Um, so if we can go um, through Stephen, Naka, Abigail, Jaime, and Jessica, if you can just introduce yourselves. <laughs> yeah, so my name is Stephen Robinson, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, here in the United States. And I went to Florida Atlantic University from 
the summer of 2016 and I just graduated in December of 2019. Uh, I started with the program back in the fall of 2018, which as Ms. LaRocco mentioned, was the uh, year that we won the national title in Washington, D.C. So that was my first introduction to the diplomacy program here at FAU. And I really enjoyed it. And it is why it prompted me to study international affairs as well as become an ambassador. So uh, yes, my name is Naka and I have, um, I've lived in Israel most of my life, but I was born in Egypt and, um, and raised there. Um, recently I left Israel a few years ago and I came back again to join the Emmis as Ophir's classmate. Um, and that's where I knew about the uh, Charney Center. Um, after I finished uh, Emmis, I uh, went to study at IDC. I'm still studying there currently, I'm a student there. And uh, last year, I was able to join as an ambassador to the Charney Center. Um, and uh, through that, I was able to go to FAU and to participate in the competition. Um, and there are some few other projects that I'm trying to work out of things that are close to my heart, like um, work with uh, the girls that are, um, that are asylum seekers here in Israel, the ones who finished their high school, because I have a feeling that um, I have a feeling, but I've seen that um, they do not have opportunities as much as Israelis here in Israel. And them being girls also put them even more in the background. Um, so I've been trying to work on some things and see that's been really helping me out. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm excited to see what can happen because something that's really close to my heart. And I'm really happy that I'm able to do even the smallest thing um, and contribute. Hi everybody, my name is Abigail Hines. I was born and raised in Boca Raton and I'm a political science major pursuing my minor in information security. And after I achieved my bachelor's, I would like to go and pursue my master's in global security and hopefully be involved in global security operations one day or just involved with the UN in general. And the Leon Charney Diplomacy Program has definitely helped me realize that is 100% my path I want to take and I've been in the program for now two semesters and unfortunately we couldn't go to New York because of COVID-19. Um, it's just been the best and I've loved it every second. Jessica? Hi, um, my name is Jessica. I was born in Ukraine and I grew up here in the States. Um, I'm in my fourth year at Florida Atlantic University studying accounting and political science. Um, the Leon Charney program, it helped me establish that I want to go into international law and going to Washington, really being able to work with everyone opened my eyes to just how vast the network of people um, you can meet and just the international community and different perspectives. So it really opened my eyes to that path going forward. Hello everyone again, I'm Jaime, I'm 18 years old and I'm half Italian and half German. I'm part of the MS graduate class of 2020 the most recent one where we and um and i recently became became uh, an ambassador at the charney resolution center and hopefully this following fall i'll attend the, the diplomacy program in florida only if COVID 19 allows it but we're hopeful and uh, yes i'm happy to be here uh, my name is Khan. I attended uh, Eastern Mediterranean uh, International School class of 2018 and in uh, towards the end of 2018 I had a chance to uh, go to uh, Florida Atlantic University and participate with the uh, Leon Charney uh, diplomacy program um, and we learned a lot about Model UN of course uh, we went to a Model UN competition and we won that one and yeah, and then ever since then, I came back home and I organized uh, our own uh, Mother UN conference back home, and it was also a very uh, great success. So we have a really unique opportunity here. We have some students who've gone through the program, and then we have Jaime who hasn't gone through it yet. So we're going to have a little bit of a moderated discussion where the students who have gone through the program can talk about their experiences, um, speaking both to Jaime and his future travels, as well as other students who might come down the road later and take the ambassador route. So the first question that I'd like to ask to all the students who have gone through the the program already what was your most memorable experience from the course the training course and then the experience of doing the um the competition in either new york or dc 
So my most memorable experience was the first conference that I participated in, which was the fall of 2018. Um, before then, I honestly did not know what Model UN was. I never heard of it. And I also was not too interested in international affairs, not particularly because I had a dislike for it, just because I wasn't introduced to it. So uh, the diplomacy program and the class with Dr. Morton was my first tiptoe in the water of international affairs and foreign diplomacy. And it really caught my interest. Um, that is the reason why I'll be attending American University, uh, Washington College of Law this fall, studying international law, is because the diplomacy program really piqued my interest in helping to change the world. Abigail, what do you think? Well, my most memorable experience from when we went to DC and just really fully captured every experience I had were even though it sounds so small, it was my first and last speech um, that I made at the uh, conference because prior to then, I never spoke to such a large crowd. I never had that kind of confidence to do so. And I was in GA4, so it was a pretty intense committee. There's a lot going on. There's like around 250 people there. And I just, I finally got to use like all the training from the simulations and everything to finally speak in front of this crowd on such important topics. And looking back on it, I'm just, I'm like, wow, I actually did that. And moving forward, I'm just one day, hopefully because of COVID, we can just do that all again. <laughs> Khan, how about you? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so prior to um, attending the diplomacy program back in 2018, I actually did Model UN for two years. Um, and still, like, that course has taught me a lot. And I think that's very interesting how, like, because I met Stephen there. Um, and I actually, Stephen, I didn't know that, like, you had zero um, experience whatsoever. So I would like to say that, like, this course really, like, attracted people who are, you know, like, almost like having no experience to like having a lot of experience and still there's like so much you get out of it because I feel like um, Dr. Morin was like very particular in how he wanted us to perform and that conference as well um, has like a lot of very like tiny rules and tiny like nuances that you kind of have to understand in order to succeed. And I feel like that conference actually taught me like the true essence of Model UN other than just like a diplomacy competition. It's all about, you know, gathering together like a really large group of people and really trying to see uh, what is there for us to solve. Yes, I've also done MUN at, uh, at MS for a year. Um, though I got into it a little bit the next second semester, but the rules were a little bit different or the way they, the MUN was conducted in, in the US was a lot more different in FAU. I guess it was a different level and stuff. And, um, and so that was like something memorable for me. And also the whole, the, the whole competition, the, the way everybody was very serious and took it very um, to heart to do their best towards it. Um, it encouraged me, and also everybody was very, very, very friendly um, and were able to help me in things that I needed. Um, and and that, these are the things that were memorable to me. Great. Jessica, what, what are your thoughts on the most memorable experience? Um, I, I love the class. Um, I love how Dr. Morton taught it. He taught it in a very different way than most professors here in the U.S., um, he gave you the tools to really establish yourself and create your own ideas, but uh, taught you to listen to others, which I think is very important when solving issues. Um, my most memorable experience was when I went um, to DC and we were competing and after we kind of took a break and we were outside and a girl came up to me and she looked at my name tag and I had the country of Ghana and she actually told me, well, I'm from Ghana. And I thought that was like one of the most incredible experiences was to actually meet someone from that country and we got a little bit we talked a little bit I uh, told her what I learned about the country and she told me you know what it was like to live there and it was just that was probably the most memorable for me was actually meeting someone. How do you think Leon Charney uh, is a role model for the students in the diplomacy program? So I say Leon is the perfect role model on really demonstrating the power of peace in diplomacy. We learn about um, Leon Charney and his legacy throughout the course and what he was able to do with the U.S. President Jimmy Carter and the Camp David Accord. And it really speaks volumes um, for the region and the area. And for me specifically, 
it was very inspiring just knowing the lengths of what diplomacy can really do in the world. And I think it just really spoke volumes to the class and to the program, the legacy that he left behind. Yeah, I would like to continue on, uh, you know, the bit about the legacy part. I feel like, because, I mean, so I joined Amos back in 2016. So I was a little bit like um, to actually getting to, you know, see him and like talk to him. However, I really do appreciate like the legacy that Lee, he lives behind, you know, like the center and its mission to actually still like strive to get students involved in very difficult conversations because even like back in Emmis uh, with all these like Israeli and Palestinian 24-hour um, peace talk I feel like we learn a lot from like a lot of like these just like pressure and understanding coming from both sides and uh, coming to the modern UN, it's it's kind of like broadening out because it's not just like a regional conflict anymore. It's like something bigger and it shows like how much um, like he cares about, you know, issues on like different scales. You've all expressed kind of various interests in going on in a career um, in diplomacy or other kinds of international relations. So how do you feel that the course and the competition resembles the actual diplomatic situation that you will end up in in your future lives? I know that one day I'm going, going to be having difficult conversations. There's going to be a lot on the line and a lot of stress in whatever I pursue and we all know that diplomacy isn't a walk in the park and we definitely got to experience that firsthand at the conference. At the conference you don't know anybody, it's people from all different parts of the world, different perspectives, so you are forced to just hop into those difficult, difficult conversations and you know, definitely in the future that we're all planning on going into we are going to have to fully learn how to view things from different lenses and uh, Dr. Morton definitely pushed us to do so. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Uh, you know, you're dealing with people from all around the world, um, um, universities from all around the U.S., so you're seeing that diversity, but in addition, you're seeing the international community really come at play. Um, and to be able to deal with that and be able to talk with people, sit down, create a mutual understanding about an issue, and then try to solve it, um, it really develops that skill of negotiating. And I think that that's one of the biggest things I learned was to be able to sit down and listen to someone first before I put my opinion out and to understand what they are going through and understand what their country needs and to be able to then come to an agreement. I think that that's a skill that's really invaluable to anyone. Living my life, I've always had to encounter different, uh, I come from different societies. I've lived in Israel, but my background is from South Sudan and um, different conflicts and uh, being a refugee for a very period, for a long period of time. And I think learning how to be, how, how to speak diplomatically, learning how to approach things, learning how to, it's something that's really important for me to acquire the skill to do so, so because I will be needing to do it in the future and it is a field that I want to get into. And so it has given me always so much skills and so many, ways to encounter different uh, challenges or different ways to say different things that are I wouldn't be able to know how to express it if I didn't go through uh, the program. For Stephen and Khan, uh, you've both been through the, the whole process. Um, if there was anything that you could add or change to the preparatory curriculum, what do you think you would do? Well, to be completely honest with you, I would not change a thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Morton is extremely meticulous with the way he trained us throughout the weeks, even from just the very first day when we just go in and introduce ourselves. Um, you have a committee partner uh, that you'll be, you know, going to the class with, that you'll be studying the same country as, and you don't get to pick that partner. So he's watching how you operate for the first two days. It is very interesting how he gets the matches on point to where you're working with someone that can either balance you out or you're like, wow, I'll, you know, I, I work well with this person. Um, from that to the way he bench, he makes benchmark goals for us with how we should be um, working our speeches, how we should be preparing our working papers, uh, how we should be moving throughout the simulations. Everything is very, very well planned out. Um, I feel like we are always, always, always extremely well prepared for conferences, both for DC and for New York. Um, and that's one of the things that everyone seems to say when we actually get to competition is, wow, we are really, really ready and I think that just goes in part to how well 
the class is planned out. So no, I would not change a thing. Con, it's okay if there is something that you want to change. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, I absolutely have to agree with uh, Steven and I would just like to add on to that. Like sometimes I feel like I am like over prepared um, because like he made us do this like really thick like stack of like information <laughs> uh, papers and I was just like why would you need all of this and then it's just like like when you come to the competition like it's just so natural like you don't even have to like look through like that folder it's just in your head already and it really comes from like the time that you were preparing for that and I feel like in addition to that he has like this like perfect balance of like a, like a cold mind and a warm heart like sometimes he would give you like a little like pep talk and you're like oh we can do this and then he would just slam you down he's like okay but here are like 10 more things that you need to improve <laughs> um and I don't know like for some reason like that really works for me that definitely like would set anybody up for success great um, so Abigail, Naka, and Jessica, um, we all know that FAU achieved a first place uh, um, award not very long ago. And I'm just wondering how important do you think it would be to the program and also to the ambassadors and the delegates um, to win a second national title? It's 100% incredibly important to get that honor and to be recognized for all of the hard work everybody involved. and. I know at the end of the day, Morton wants us to go to the uh, competition and just try our very best. And if we get that national title, incredible. But I know that with that title does come some insane honor that we do deserve. And to get our name out there for what we've done, it's just amazing for the program and for the outreach that could happen. I would agree that uh, having an award or having something is, it's, it promotes the program for future students. It attracts other kids that are coming up through um, FAU, being a freshman, learning about it. That's how I learned about actually joining the diplomacy program. But at the end of the day, it's really just about getting into an international community, getting experience that no other class is gonna show you at FAU. And I think that's the most important aspect of this is just being able to be there and learn the skills that you wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. Um, I, I, I do think that the glory and the honor of winning is very, very important because you do practice and all that in the end to win. But I also think the actual experience that you go to, whether you win or you do not win, is something that you will carry out with you like for the entire your entire life. You can use it even in business. It doesn't have to be politics. It doesn't have to be like you can use it anywhere in the world. The skills that you get, you acquire, you're just going to use it all the time, which is, I think for me, is far more important to acquire. And, and that's a wonderful segue to our next question um, because we continue to have relationships with our firm, former students and our ambassadors. To Stephen and to Khan, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you have done since graduating? Yeah, so um, I recently graduated in December. So it's been about, well, now is the sixth month uh, since graduation. And since then, I've moved back home to Atlanta, Georgia. Like I said, I will be starting law school this fall semester. Um, so I've been doing everything in my power to move to DC. So I'm very excited that I have two months left and then I'll be <laughs> where I want to be. But um, I'm studying international law at American University. And the whole reason for that is because of my experiences with the diplomacy program. I always wanted to study law. I didn't necessarily know what area though. However, the experiences that I've had in DC, in New York and uh, DC again, I really just solidified it for me. I really wanna work uh, for the betterment of international relations, whether that be through the uh, State Department, whether that be through other agencies. Um, I just wanna make my way and make a difference. As an ambassador, one of my first projects was to go and interview Barry Nicholsberg, who is the director of the Carter Center here in Atlanta, Georgia. And there I really learned about um, more in depth about the relationship between Jimmy Carter and Leon Charney. Uh, there were many, many exhibits on the Camp David Accords and just seeing some of the artifacts and the pictures and talking with Barry on um, the, his relationship with Jimmy Carter really set home the difference that people can make through diplomacy. Um, it was a really, really great experience, but I'm very, very grateful for that opportunity. So that was another great um, experience that I've had through the Leon Charney Resolution Center, through the diplomacy program that has really just 
continue to hit home with me that I want to pursue this avenue. And what about you? I started working on uh, organizing our own uh, Modern United Nations uh, conference back home. And um, needless to say, it was, a, it was a really great success. Um, our conference was like the biggest one in Vietnam and also the most credible one. Um, and I, um, I was the head of the content department. So I was in charge of practically all the chairs um, and all the contents of every single committee. Um, so that was obviously like a really big responsibility to hold, uh, but also a very rewarding one because I get to, you know, see my, you know, my two very like important um, organizations in my life collaborate with each other, which is, you know, the Leon Charney Center and um, my, uh, my organization, which is the Vietnamese Youth Cooperation Organization. Um, and ever since then, I also chaired a couple of modern United Nations conferences, uh, which is really great because, you know, being a chair, it means you get to be the mentor to your delegates now. And I feel like a lot of lessons that I'm giving out to my delegates actually, like, literally just come from like the words of Dr. Moore. Like, I just feel like, like, I'm just like spreading the words out. Right now, I've kind of, you know, like, turn into the direction of environmental sciences, which is what I study now, um, which is a little different, but I'm still trying to find my connection uh, to, you know, like politics and diplomacy. And I feel like in this time um, in the US where, you know, Black Lives Movement is such like a strong movement, you know, I feel like I am able to voice my opinion uh, with, you know, like, critical thinking skill and a lot of like persuade, uh, pers persuasion because of all the skills that I've learned back in, you know, modern UN, because I feel like back then you were representing an idea of someone else. And in representing those ideas, you know how to actually fight for these causes. And now that these opinions are your own, you can, you know, you can amplify it so much uh, stronger. One of the things that we wanted to do in this webinar is try to reflect a little bit on our past experiences and is there anything that you would have done differently now with the benefit of hindsight in either the training course or in the competitions? Well, to start, it's very hard to think about that because as stated prior, Dr. Morton is so meticulous. So you go into the competition knowing whatever happens, it's because of your training. And so looking back on it, I know every, I did everything I possibly could but something I know I probably could have done differently, I don't know if I would have achieved a different outcome due to the circumstances, is a lot of big groups that were having really difficult conversations, I probably shouldn't have been so anxious about just like stepping in there, trying to get my opinion in there, even if it wasn't accepted, just to state who I was and my cause. And so that is definitely something I would have done differently in that aspect in terms of uh, the speeches, probably just run it through my with my partner like multiple, multiple times the night before and just make sure we are concrete on it so that when we step on that floor for the first speech, we are there, we are prepared and we're ready to go. And yeah, that's two of the things I probably would have done a little differently. Uh, I agree, like uh, Dr. Morton really does prepare you um, for anything that comes your way and he says it in the very beginning and he proves it by the end of the course that um, you really try for any argument that you wanna have, for any discussion you wanna make, for any point you wanna emphasize, he really shows you how to do it. So when you go in, you know, everyone's nervous the first day, especially for us, you know, having it as the first competition, you're sitting there and you're sweating and you're looking around at, you know, I was in GA1, I looked around, there was tons of people, but then you start hearing speeches and you start hearing how people present and you start talking to people and you realize there's nothing to be afraid of and just to, stay your course and do as well as you can. Um, one thing, you know, that can always be better is to learn more about the country and learn a little bit more about other countries, which is what I would like to do if I do the competition again, is take the time and look at what else is going around, look more into, I had Ghana, so look more into our neighboring countries of what uh, Africa really stands for and different countries in Africa and how they look towards the situation. And so that way I'm more prepared when I go in, I can know the situations in different countries and really attract different people to work on the issue. So for the five of you that have um, participated already, what kind of advice would you give to Jaime before he joins the program? Yeah, so John, I would say go into it with an open mind. This class will take 
you know, your skills as far as speech wise, uh, your comfort in being uncomfortable to a different level. It really does. Um, I really hope that you do enjoy it. I know that you will and you will learn a lot. Uh, so my, I just encourage you to do it and to do it well. There's really nothing to be afraid of. Like Jessica said, uh, when you are in committee and whether you're in a GA, be confident in your abilities, in your training, and you'll have fun. Yeah, I would also say like never be afraid to ask questions. I feel like you grow a lot from questions. It's the same thing when you communicate with your like with your partner because that person is going to really help you. Like I like honestly like I thank my partner like every single time because she's like always like my anchor for me uh, because like I get um competitive and like aggressive very quickly and she's like you know like the calm one that's kind of like okay you calm down and then we can do this together so I feel like communication is also a very big part uh probably I have like three key things I would first definitely trust the process this was a completely new scenario for me so I was a little overwhelmed I was like how am I going to ever be prepared for this competition this is insane it was successful and you just have to, at the end of the day, you just have to trust Dr. Morton and everything he says. Another thing, definitely take constructive criticism, be open to it. Don't take anything that Dr. Morton says as a slight against you or anything. He's just there for your well being and just so that you can grow within the program. But you know, the next time your speech is just going to be that much better, your participation is going to be that much better. And all around it's just helping your success definitely the last thing is throughout the course try your hardest on all speeches and binder checks because you don't want to be on the last day right before competition printing things or finishing up that speech you want to arrive at that tr on the trip and arrive at the conference just there and ready to just take charge yeah um i would agree uh, trusting the process is something that's definitely, it's the core thing. You really just got to go with what is told um, to you because it's going to help you at the end of the day shape your uh, beliefs and shape the way you want to say it, but say it in a diplomatic setting. Um, so that's a very key thing. But the biggest thing I think is just to listen, to have the ability to sit back. And even though you have an idea, you have an agenda, and you have to push it. Um, although it is a competition, it's really just a mass discussion of international students and with the goal of completing um, a resolution. And I think that that's kind of what the judges told us is, although it's a competition, remember you're working as an international community, it's not your resolution, it's everyone's resolution. It's everyone's problem, it's a, it's a global connection. And you really do get to experience that and I think that that's one of the biggest things you get from this program, it's just incredible to sit there with all these people so you know i don't know if you'll be able to do firm handshakes when we get there we might have to do elbow um elbow to elbow greetings but you know just look people in the eye and listen to what they have to say take it in and then process it and really just give it your all um i would like to express the don't be afraid don't be afraid because you're going to learn a lot of things don't be afraid even though you're gonna just come in there and you're probably gonna be nervous being a new uh being new there and another thing is um really hard with your partner. I trust it's really important to have a dynamic between you and your partner so you can be able to have uh, less clashes once you're already, already in the competition, less um, things like arguments or anything, but it's gonna be organized and you're gonna know exactly what you need to do. Um, so we know that listening is as important as uh, uh, anything else in diplomacy and conflict resolution, but Jaime has been great at listening to all of this, but hasn't had much to say himself. So mm -hmm. now I want to give the floor to him and say, what are some of your goals for the upcoming program and some of your goals for the, the sort of longer trajectory of your life? Um, thank you for your advice. I, I think it's going to be very helpful once I'm there. And I've heard already many, many good things about Professor Morden, so I'm very excited about that. And I like the fact that you told me how he's very organized and meticulous. I think that's something I'm, I'm going to work with very well. I, I have already some experience with MUN, and I believe in general, even if it's not a competition or not politics, communication is the core of, like... Of human relations and if you if you're able to talk to someone else and mostly if you're able to listen to them 
and tell them the things in the right way, it will really help you to accomplish whatever you want. And uh, related a little bit more to myself and my future, I am, after taking my gap year, I, I want to start a degree, a university degree, probably in the field of international relations and politics. I, am, I still have to figure out which university, but I have a year of time. And I hope the program will give me either a confirmation of this or um, thoughts and reflections on other fields I want to embark in my life. So I'm very excited. And Sadi, I know you wanted to ask um, a, a kind of broader question to close it out. So I hand it over to you. My question is, um, what is your most significant takeaway from this program in general? Um, I guess I'll start. I think it was just meeting everybody, the exposure and being able to understand situations and viewpoints from so many different perspectives and having Naka join us and meeting everybody was just an incredible, incredible experience. And it was just so fun and so interesting. Didn't seem like I was doing work at all. It was, I was happy to do it. And I was happy that one day this could be what I'm doing with my life. So just at the end of the day, being able to understand all those perspectives and the program itself has definitely um, made a new path for me in life. No, I just wanted to add that um, the experience of, of uh, MUN again, going back again, kind of reminded me of what I, I missed that I had it at MS and reminded me of the importance of, uh, of conversation, the importance of togetherness, the importance of the whole experience. Yeah. Um, this is a little cheesy, but I feel like I found um, another home in Florida because during my time there, wow. I've, I've made um, a lot of, well, I mean, it's been only two years, but let's just say I made lifelong connections. Um, <laughs> I met the most wonderful group of friends. Like all of them are really great influences on me and they're on like grad schools right now and we're still talking uh, like about politics or like, um, or like the basics, uh, which is like my host family. Uh, from time to time, we still exchange, you know, like emails. Like if I go back, I know definitely there will be welcome hands for me. And I feel like that's also the same thing uh, with the people um, at the, you know, Leon Charney Center, especially Zilli. I feel like, um, you know, during my time organizing um, the conference back home, you guys have been, you know, wonderful at communicating with me. Um, and it like it made the process so much easier and I feel like I could always you know reach out if I want help um, and I would also like love to help promote the image of the Leon Charney um, Center of course and so I feel like like the two-way street um, has been really like cleaned out and smooth uh, selling for me and I feel like that's just something that, I don't know, like Jaime would like to get out this experience during your next semester. Yeah, uh, besides just meeting everyone and getting lifelong friends and um, just enjoying the experience, you can apply it to your real world. Uh, I work in a, a campaign firm. And so being able to talk to uh, communities out here and really understand it's a whole different way I talk to them now and to really talk to everyone that has different ideas no matter who's the candidate and who's running for office or uh, we had to deal with the COVID-19 crisis up here in West Palm Beach and Palm Beach and being able to tell people that it's going to be okay listening to their problems um, and really helping our company help the uh, the community it's just that's what that program also gave to me it gave me the confidence to know that I can listen to people I, I know how to take it in and that's some that's a skill I didn't have before I really didn't and so this program not only did it change my life my work my ability to you know be confident in what I believe in um it just and gave me a group of friends I mean Abby is uh, you know I didn't know her before this program and we've been hanging out every day since whether it's through video chat or um, meeting in person so it's truly a great experience and Dr. Morton and I have everything to thank for him and Zilly for starting this and it's just truly it's an incredible program um, a lot of times in the program, you really don't know uh, anybody unless you're friends before, but there are a lot of people, my committee partners especially, and just others that you become really, really good friends with.
uh, similar to Khan, I say like lifelong friends. Um, you just, the connection is really, it feels like more like a family, the diplomacy program, just because everything you do um, and you go through <laughs> with each other for the, about the 16 weeks of the semester. And it's just been a really great source of connections. I brought a couple of people into the program after I've gone through it my first time, just because I highly, highly recommend it to anyone who's just willing to, you know, get a different um, viewpoint and understanding of whether or not they're interested in international affairs or not, just so that way they can um, enhance their empathy. I feel like being able to represent these countries, these different countries we get, but just being able to, you know, get that perspective of understanding um, firsthand a country's, uh, you know, very unique viewpoint of international affairs and their own politics. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a once in a lifetime uh, type of opportunity. Yeah, I did learn a lot. Thank you very much, <laughs> all of you. Um, so thank, thank you to everyone for joining in. We have a multi-country, multi-continental video chat um, happening right now, which is amazing in many ways. But it's in part because we're in a real time of uncertainty right now, um, both the, the global pandemic, but also in the United States. Uh, racked again with police violence and structural racism. So the idea that the skills that all of you are developing through the program, the skills of listening, of empathy, of putting yourself in someone else's shoes are probably more important now than, than we can imagine. So I just wanna say thank you. Um, I appreciate being able to facilitate the moderation and uh, I'm honored to be the associate director of the program standing in for Dr. Morton today. And thank you to Silly for organizing as well as bringing all of these different parts of the sort of Charney family together to talk about the programs that we are interacting with. So thank you all.